one. First of all, thanks to everyone who constantly shares their delightful stories of guests' night shifts from hell, and the occasional feel-good story of a manager sticking up for someone. You guys made me see we're not alone, and that the audacity of some people knows no bounds. I've worked in several hotels, ranging from all-inclusive resorts and exotic beaches to lower-end business hotels in small towns. Yet in every hotel I've ever worked, guests seem to have the sentiment that just because they asked for something means they're entitled to get it. Why do people think that asking for something is a guaranteed way of getting what you want? I have people coming to me on every platform saying, can I get a refund on my non-refundable booking? And when we tell them, no, that's what the non-refundable part is about, they just seem to go off. How is this acceptable? Every other hotel in the world refunds my last minute cancellations. Do you have any idea who I am? Article 47 of the Consumer Law states I have 14 days to reconsider my purchase. As if that last part even refers to lodging. Like, dude, if you wanted a refund, you should have picked the slightly more expensive rate. Then we'll refund you. Then there's people who throw absolute hissy fits when we tell them, no, we can't put up extra beds, we're a three-star hotel, and our rooms were not designed to accommodate you and your extended family of three children of 15, 16, and 17 years old. We have a few baby strollers and that's it. Only to hear, but we asked for it on bearings.com. Why would you allow us to ask for it in our remarks if you weren't going to give them to us? Because you can literally write anything in those remarks. You could ask for all staff to do a somersault over the front desk when you enter. That doesn't mean we'll do it. Every once in a while you get hit with the Could you stay open for longer today? I just arrived at closing time and still wish to get hammered on the costs of the company. No, sir, we will not keep the bar, restaurant, pool, or massage parlor open for longer than the indicated time. Everybody working there was likely already counting down the minutes to last call, which was half an hour ago. But just one drink, I hear them shouting in my face. How can you treat a guest this way? Are you like this to anyone who stumbles in here? Or my own personal favorite, I'd like to book a room and give me a good price. Like, sure, dude, I'll just have a look in the back and see if we still have any good prices left. Maybe I'll just find a bigger price somewhere and slice off a piece just for you. But I saw it cheaper on Barkings.com. Entirely possible, sir. Did that price include breakfast, city tax, access to all our amenities, and the amount of people you actually want to cram into this room? 99 guests can come through your hotel, and you won't hear a peep from them. But that one guest has to come in and feel like they're the exception to the rule. The outlier, the VIP. They will huff and puff and wheeze. I don't care what the rules or policy says. I asked for preferential treatment, so I expect to get it. Don't get me wrong. I'm willing to go the extra mile to ensure everybody has a good stay. I sometimes go above and beyond just to make someone's day a little bit better. This attitude is what has gotten me through 10 years of hospitality so far. But guests have to learn that sometimes the answer to a question is no. 2. This was one of the most frustrating interactions I've had with a customer in forever. And we just got pinged for it by our system, so I really need to rant for a minute. I'm gonna be honest, I have ADHD, and I ramble, so if you listen to this, <laughs> thank you and I'm sorry. I'm a night auditor at a luxury hotel. I used to work at a really not luxury hotel beforehand, and honestly, working here is the exact same. I could tell so many stories from the 10 plus years I've been in this industry, but this one... Oh, this one. Our doors lock at a certain time, so after that you have to call to get in. But the sign is only in English, so this one I understand, somewhat. Even though a phone number seems pretty easy to understand in any language, but oh well, I guess. What I don't understand is starting to pound on the door to get in like your Jack Nicholson. Thankfully, as I was doing my nightly walk, I heard them, so I let them in. Two young ladies, one of them already giving me a dirty look, and I turned to lead them to the desk. 
Firstly, I just want to say it's always a bad idea to assume someone can't speak your language, or at least understand some of it. My first serious girlfriend was half Mexican and full crazy, so I learned a lot of complaining words. We will put it that way, so I was already in no mood. Secondly, under 21 IDs are printed a certain way, usually, and they pretty much always have the under 21 warning on it, so right off I knew I wouldn't be able to check them in. We have two open bars in the building, and we can't let people check in under 21. It says it on our website, but only on our website. Third-party reservations have no idea about this, and it causes a big headache. So I tell them I can't check them in. The one girl quietly puts her stuff back in her bag, ready to leave, but the other one goes off at me. Calling me racist, saying I was always going to cancel because they're Mexican. I tune her out and wait for her to be done before repeating that it was just policy and I can't change that. She wants a refund. Sorry, third party, you have to cancel and they'll call us. They did. I said no. They didn't call within 24 hours. Manager backed me mostly because they were assholes. She got all snooty with me and said her husband will come and make a reservation for them, and they will stay then. I said sure, so long as he brings some identification and a credit card with his name on it. She insisted they use the other girl's card. Nope, gotta be the same name. She said they'll pay cash. Nah, sorry we don't do that. I told them the other hotels in the area that didn't have bars even bothering to list one, that does I knew took cash, and finished off with offering to call them a ride with a taxi. She said they weren't going to leave, threatening my job, which at this point in my career, I've heard more times than the Fast Series fans have heard the word family. So I'm not really phased. I repeated my offer to call them a ride, either the taxi or the police could escort them off the premises. More complaining words, more not caring. I pick up the phone, and finally the one girl pulls her arm a little to get her moving. Que te vaya bien. I replied as they exited the building, to now wait for their taxi as I still call for them. On our tab, mind you. Out of habit, really. Outside instead of in the lobby, where I would have let them stay if she hadn't been so rude. I do feel somewhat bad for the other girl, because she was ready to go the first time and was pretty quiet overall. We got a message from our customer service team from them and it was not happy picking me out by name, saying I was racist. Eh. That's just, like, your opinion, man. 3. Settle down with a beverage and nosh, it's a long one. Once upon a time, in the pre-pandemic period, in a city center luxury collection hotel, there worked a small but spunky night auditor, yours truly. Yours truly is a woman of experience and classy appearance, accustomed to dealing with people in all walks of life. Callers of white or blue, drivers of vehicles with wheels 2 to 18, doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs. She loved her job, loved her hotel and her team. Front desk, engineering, housekeeping, night porter, security, and valet, among others. Our Stories LCH is a preferred destination for international and business travelers, small but sparkly conventions, sports figures and others who attract ticket buyers, shiny, shiny points people, and those who are celebrating special occasions. Front Desk and yours truly are an efficient duo, working well together to help our late-night arrivals settle in quickly and happily, offering information on amenities and activities which may be of value as is suggested by procedure. But being aware of the stress that may have contributed to their appearance at that hour, one of your Australia's responsibilities is creating a daily newsletter that informs the staff of important information such as occupancy, events, and high-value guests. As manager on duty, she reviews arrivals and verifies that any special needs have been met. For instance, if special occasion guests, such as the newly wedded, are still anticipated, she makes sure flowers and other gifts are in the room, and all is wonderful. Although it didn't happen often, it was one of her favorite arrivals. Who doesn't love a happy couple on the best day of their lives? Enter the unexcited groom and the silent bride. 
Silent bride is splendent in her sparkly ball gown, and unexcited groom is in jeans and a shirt, carrying his tuxedo on a hanger. Front desk was engaged with another guest, so yours truly greeted the couple with joy and congratulations, welcoming them and inquiring their names, identification, and credit card. It soon became apparent that all was not well in Hooterville, my friends. Unexcited groom grumbles as he fumbles for the required documents, and yours truly verifies the guest details, offers room and restaurant information, in-room dining only at that early hour, as the bride stands stiffly a full six feet from the groom, never changing her gaze from the art wall behind yours truly. Keys, elevator instructions, and room directions are given, and our newlyweds depart. Front desk and yours truly exchange a look. The night porter who witnessed the arrival just hmms. Sure enough, a few minutes later, we hear the elevator door on the other side of the wall ding as the doors open, and the unexcited groom returns. They can't get to their floor. Elevator instructions are repeated, and off he goes. Night porter peers into the elevator lobby, but it seems to have been a successful journey. Twenty minutes or so go by, and the unexcited groom appears. The phone in his room doesn't work, and there's no Kleenex. Apologies are offered. Fresh box of tissues are given, and an assurance that the engineer will be requested to repair the instrument at their convenience. Grumbles and gone without a requested repair time. Ten or so minutes, elevator ding. Pause. Grumbles increase in volume, and what sounds like the lobby phone is slammed down. Night porter, who can see the lobby from where he is cleaning, lifts an eyebrow to me. Elevator is called again and departs. Ten minutes, elevator ding, stomping around the wall. Unexcited groom shakes his room phone at me, yelling about our lousy hotel with lousy phones and idiot employees and demands a manager. Upon being informed that he's already got the manager on duty, he declares that something must be done immediately. Yours truly offers suggestions for operating the cordless phone in his hand, and he declares that the only idiot is right in front of him. Since the volume of this conversation is not appropriate for the front desk lobby, and the front desk is showing a bit of stress, yours truly accompanies the unexcited groom to his floor, as front desk notifies the engineer and discreetly informs security that assistance is needed. Yours truly is now outside of the connubial bliss suite, trying to explain that the phone is not going to work in the hallway as it's too far from the base. But unexcited groom is just getting started with the craziest rant yours truly has ever heard, and that, dear listeners, is a feat. But a story for another time, as this one is plenty long. A business card is demanded, but yours truly doesn't have one. Mockery of salary commences! Among other insults, but yours truly is really just wondering if the poor girl in the room was a required bride to receive control of a trust fund. Is that still a thing? Anne can only pity the red-faced man-child in front of her. Engineer arrives and enters the room with the unexcited groom. Security comes down the hall and accompanies yours truly as she returns to her station and her checklist. Remarking to the front desk and security her standard comment, Some people's children. Engineer drops by the desk and reports that unexcited groom was confused by the button marked CALL, which must be pressed to get a dial tone. Grins were exchanged, heads shaken, and the phone rings. Front desk responds and is informed that her special guests are departing, never to return. All is quiet and checklist resumed. Perhaps 30 minutes, the valet arrives with their reports and concludes our tale. To set the scene, the ground floor lobby outside wall is completely glass. Two sets of tall glass doors allow access from the street. Our valet observed a female guest exit an elevator, dragging two sets of luggage and purposefully striding out of the hotel. A bit slower, a man appeared engulfed in a frothy wedding dress that he, not so gracefully, tried to keep control of, and snapped at Valet. Well, aren't you going to open the doors for me? Whereupon our valiant Valet, 
bowed, with his hand sweeping out towards the exit. The doors are open. Four. So I work at a hotel, and I've been working here for about nine months now. Before this, I worked at restaurants as a waitress, so I'm all too accustomed to the assholey people. Never in my life have I seen such whiny people. Now, we're a bigger corporate hotel in the middle of bumfuck of nowhere. Why they decided to do that is beyond me, like we need extra traffic. I work all shifts, AM, PM, and night audit. As most would guess, I prefer night audit. I don't even take naps. I just like that there's not a lot of people, and most of the time they're so plastered and rude that I'm able to just tell them to go to their room and we're good. Over the past three weeks, people have completely blown my mind. I'm a tiny ass girl, like five foot, 100 pounds. Last weekend was a bit crazy. Some lady was getting dragged in by two men because she broke her ankle in a ditch, like a 60 year old woman. The bartender and I went to help and as we were doing that, we had a guy come behind our bar and try to take some wine, after we shut the bar down. At first I didn't notice it, and I hear our bartender screaming, Security! Security! I whip around and see this like 6'3 skinny white guy behind our bar, with two literal bottles of wine. Something in me clicked, and I darted my little ass to him. Apparently I looked like I was about to tackle the dude. I snatched the bottles from him, and he was like, I'm just trying to get more wine. I looked at him and said, What you're trying to do is catch a charge, because I'm calling the boys. He tries to argue with me, and I start closing the space between us, and kind of got on his face. To the extent of my height. And calmly told him to get out from behind my bar. My bartender is still yelling at him, and I'm calmly telling him to get out, and I started walking him out. Some dude thought a piece of wood was left over food, tried to have the housekeepers clean the entire room. I went up there, packed up the wood, and told them I cleaned it personally. They told me it was so much cleaner. Our hotel has been open since winter of 2022. A guest said our beds were way too soft and way too old. We have to lock all of our doors by 11 p.m., People get mad they have to walk around the hotel to use their keycard to get in. We have a very nice back porch. People say that they should be able to get in and out as they please. I had one lady at like 2am one time, screaming at me because I wouldn't get up and unlock the door for her. I should be able to go in and out as I please. I looked back at her with a blank stare. You can by scanning your keycard at the front door it doesn't have a limited amount of times you can go out. She rolled her eyes and yelled back, By the fucking back door! Why have a nice porch if I can't even use it? Ma'am, you can. You have to travel... Yeah, through the front door. Like everyone else. Ma'am, it's for safety. I don't want random people walking in here. That doesn't concern me. It should. You should be thankful that we care this much about your safety that we take such lengths to make sure random people off the street can't get in here. What happens if the doors are unlocked? Someone walks up to your room, breaks down your door, and steals everything from your room. I don't feel like that is professional, so I'll stick to the regulations given, have a nice night, and walked into the employee kitchen. It's 3 a.m. You came back from the bar, and now all of a sudden housekeeping never showed up. How so, if you just checked in with me? I had a guest check in at literally 1.56am, waited until 3am to tell me that he showered and needed more towels. You get four in the room to start off with, it's just him. Uh, housekeeping never came to my room. I looked up the room number. Aha, you just checked in. Sir, housekeeping was in your room today because you checked in about two hours ago. They were in there before you. What can I help you with? Well, they never gave me towels. I need six. To the room. I can't leave the front desk. I'm by myself. Can you come down and grab them? We're also not a full-service hotel. However, I will bring stuff to rooms if we don't have a fat amount of rooms sold. No, I'm naked and have no one staying with me. 
The towels are too small. I've stayed in our hotel. I've showered here and used the towels. I promise they're not too small. I kind of giggle a bit and say, What do you mean they're too small? They're normal sized towels. I need them now. I run up to his room and leave his towels at the door. Knock and literally book it down the hallway. Apparently, he had all ten towels soaked and thrown into a pile on his balcony. Hair has come out of a shower head. This didn't actually happen. I don't know what they were on. People leaving bad reviews of something being broken or something, but never reporting it to literally anyone. It's not my fault you can't read the reservation when you book it online. We have waterfront and non-waterfront. We have balcony waterfronts. And that is the only room type that has them. Five. So this happened several weeks ago. I've been chuckling about it since. I just felt I had to share. It's another Friday night audit shift on a sellout weekend. Everything was doing great. Everybody was in, and I was going to have a breezy night of getting to turn people away before we've got nothing left to sell. It was just before midnight when he walks in. At first it goes down like it so commonly does. Hey, my key isn't working. A very common problem. Our keys are still using 80s tech cars with magnetic strips. Back then, everyone knew not to let magnets near it. But with recent advances in tech, it's no longer well known. People will put them in their magnetic wallets or on the same pocket as their wireless earbuds. Even iPhones, I hear, have magnets in them for mounting. Near daily, I've got to remake someone's keys and warn them not to keep them too close to devices. Anyway, moving on. Alright, no problem. What's the room number? 2112. And can you verify the name? And he gives me the manager's name. Uh, looking at the room in the system, I notice it's not under the manager's name. In fact, I distinctly remember checking in that guest the night before. What do you mean? They gave me the room, and I've been staying there over a week. This brings up a memory of that Tuesday morning before I was leaving for the day. I never met or even saw the guy. But he had been, in fact, staying for a week. But the housekeeping manager was discussing about how the guy needed to go. I don't know the issues why, but he'd clearly overstayed his welcome. Look, sorry man, I don't know what deal you had with the manager, but I don't see you in there since at late is Wednesday. And there's someone else in the room now, you're going to have to talk to the manager in the morning. But what about my stuff? I have no idea where they would secure that, you're going to have to talk to the manager in the morning. Well that isn't right. They gave me that room for whatever. You'll have to talk with the manager in the morning. At this point, just parroting myself until he gets the message. He frantically starts texting the manager, but I know for a fact he won't respond, usually after 10pm, as he's in bed by 9.30, even on weekends. He demands I call the manager, so I humor him by calling him once. Call the owner, or the cops. I can tell them about the drugs. Trying to scare me. I am not involved with any sort of drugs, so this bluff wasn't flying with me. I don't have the owner's number, even if I did. I'm not calling him in the middle of the night over this. A lie. I did have the number, but there was nothing for him to do. Finally, realizing he wouldn't gain any ground, he storms off. At first, hangs around the front, blowing up the manager's phone with texts for a while before finally leaving. I thought it was over, but it wasn't. 2.30 a.m., guy comes storming in again. Call the owner or the cops, because this isn't flying. He apparently had tried sleeping in his car, but it got too hot for him. I still don't have the owner's number, so don't know what to tell you. He goes off to a table in the lobby while I handle an actual paying guest. By the time I'm done, he tells me the cops are on the way. The interaction with the cops isn't really anything notable. I tell them a basic rundown of the above. And after telling them my side, I shrug. I have no idea what the guy is expecting to happen at 3 a.m. The cops shake their heads. Nothing. That's exactly what happened. Nothing. Guy was forced to walk away empty-handed with his tail between his legs. It took about a week until I got the story from the manager. Apparently, this guy was a friend of a friend they met at a party. 
Guy was going through some issues with his significant other, and it involved a split, but nowhere for the guy to go. The manager, out of the kindness of his heart, let the guy stay a while so he could get back on his feet. Apparently, his car was also broke down, so was helping with rides and even getting him money for food to the tune of a couple of hundred dollars. At some point, a trip to Biloxi got involved, and a three-hour drive from here. Guy had alluded to this in his arguing. The way he was describing it, they completely abandoned him there. Apparently, the story I got from the manager was that, yeah, they parted ways in Biloxi, because the guy had said that he was meeting up with someone else who would give him a ride from there. Only it turns out that the ride fell through and didn't get back to the manager until they were finally back home. They were not close enough to make a second trip. Apparently when he came to me was when he made it back to town and expected the room to be his for as long as he needed it. After the way he had blown up the manager's phone that night, he was not allowed back in, and in fact given a few days to get his car off the lot. He tried helping the guy out of the kindness of his heart, but it turned out he just got walked over by the guy's sheer entitlement. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Kowahu, episode 125. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, I would appreciate it if you poke the like button. And if you'd like to get the videos a little bit early, then you can support me through my Patreon, which is linked in the description. You can also find the link to the Hellfreezer merchandise store to get yourself some awesome Hellfreezer merch. You're also able to make donations during streams and videos like this one. While you don't have to do this, I do appreciate it, and I thank you very much. Alrighty, let's see. I don't think there's any other business, so let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... Is a quiche an egg pie, and is a meatloaf a meat cake? Let me know your opinion in a comment below. I say yes. And with that, I'm gonna head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.